Hi everybody, this is Dr. Sharon McLaughlin from Health Street Journal. Today I wanted to talk about diastasis recti. Um, I've seen a lot online as far as, you know, different exercise programs and binders. And so I wanted to take a look at the literature and see, you know, what's really supported in the literature. So let's take a look, okay? And I'll discuss diastasis recti. All right, so let's talk about the anterior abdominal wall. You have the rectus muscle going up and down. You see that to the right side there. Um, they run on either side, from the xiphoid all the way down to the pubic bone. They run on either side of the belly button or the embolicus. All right, and in the diastasis, it's these muscles that separate um, in the middle portion called the linea alba. The anterior abdominal wall is also made up of the external oblique and the internal oblique, as well as the transverse abdominus muscles. And these are important. Those muscles together make up the anterior abdominal wall. And it's thought that perhaps it's not just the, a problem with the rectus abdominis muscle that causes the diastasis, but an actual thinning of all the muscles of the anterior abdominal wall, specifically the rectus and the transversalis um, abdominis muscle. All right, let's take another look at a diastasis. What is a diastasis exactly? If you're looking on imaging, it's going to be a separation of the rectus abdominis muscles. And you see that on the bottom left-hand corner there. Um, to the right there, that would be, you know, uh, the anterior abdominal wall where the fa fascia itself has then been sutured together. This is after an abdominal plasty. Same thing, um, bottom right-hand corner, you see the diastasis. And this is with the patient, um, you know, rotated. And, and also there's a post-op imaging picture showing that there's now closure of the diastasis. So this is what a diastasis would look like on imaging. And, and it truly is a separation of the, the recti muscle. Now this differs than a hernia. A hernia is an actual defect um, where there's a, a, a control hole um, and bowel can come through that. So when we talk about diastasis recti, it's a thinning, it's a separation, but it's not a, a ventral hernia or an incisional hernia. Um, that, that would be something different. All right, some of the factors that are associated with um, diastasis recti. Uh, significant weight gain can cause it. If you have a tissue disorder, uh, some of those people are more prone to develop diastasis recti and certainly pregnancy. There are some studies. I have a website called Health Street Journal where I published this article, um, but I did a, a literature review, and there was one paper that cited that at 35-week pregnancy, 100% of uh, the participants had a diastasis recti. So you can see with intra-abdominal pressure, um, that certainly is going to increase the risk of developing a diastasis recti. All right, so how do we test for diastasis recti? Very simply, you can lie yourself on the floor, um, lying flat with your feet out and your arms to your side. Take your left hand or your right hand, fingers right into the center of the abdomen. And what you want to do is you want to lift your head up, right? You want to cause uh, increase in intra-abdominal pressure. And that itself, when you do that, is going to um, make, it, make it easy for you to determine whether or not you have a diastasis recti. Some studies that I also um, cite in that article, it's pretty unclear as far as exactly what, um, there's not a general consensus what a diastasis recti is, like what the measurements are, but by and large, about two centimeters, anything over two centimeters, either above or below uh, the belly button or the embolicus, would be considered a diastasis recti. So you'll be able to determine that if, you know, you simply, um, just do this test. There's other ways too that you can do it. You can do an ultrasound. You could do CAT scan imaging. Um, problem with CAT scan imaging is that there's radiation involved. So it's not something that I would recommend. And it truly is an exam on, you know, based on clinical findings. All right, let's talk about treatment of diastasis recti. In my literature search, I came across the use of uh, abdominal binders for diastasis recti. Um, the studies were small. There was one study, I think it had 18 people. There was another study with 20 people. So the bottom line is you can use an abdominal binder. You need to discuss this when you're pregnant with your OBGYN. And the reason for that is because binders themselves, although they lend support, they definitely cut off blood supply. They compress. So be careful with that. Um, and I, I definitely would recommend speaking to an OBGYN. As far as binders after pregnancy, again, clear it with your OBGYN. Um, but they, they can 
you know, there have been studies supporting the use of a binder, but the bottom line is uh, additional studies are going are needed to determine whether or not the use of a binder is truly going to help uh, with that diastasis. Remember, a lot of these are going to heal on their own, um, but it's with that group of uh, like 30% that are still going to have a diastasis a, um, you know, a 12 months after delivery. The other thing that I hear a lot about is, and, and it was also, um, you know, significant in my literature search was exercises. Exercises um, can probably help, you know, the literature supports that. Again, the studies are small, uh, but there are definitely some exercises which I re would recommend. Um, you have to start off small first, okay, um, or mild, I should say, not necessarily small, but mild. Any exercise that's going to increase the intra-abdominal pressure is going to increase the risk of a um, diastasis recti. So that's really important to keep in mind, okay? You certainly don't want to make it worse. You, you're doing the exercises to make this better and improve it. So we spoke about binders, we spoke about exercises. The other thing that I came across was electrical stimulation, um, the use of like electrical stimulation. And what that does is it actually contracts the muscles and it sort of acts like a supplement or alternative to um, exercise. And that, there was one study of 50 participants, I believe, and that was also shown to help with diastasis recti. So just some things to keep in mind. All right, so one simple exercise, lie down on the ground, take a deep breath in, and you wanna engage that core. You wanna make sure that those recti muscle are tight and they're pulled up and they're pulled back towards your spine, okay? So with the core engaged, with the recti muscle um, engaged and being contracted, and what you wanna do is then take that foot up and you wanna slide it along the floor. That's a simple exercise that you can do uh, pretty early on after pregnancy, but you do want to speak with your OBGYN and you need to clear any exercises that you're doing with them. Obviously, if you've had a cesarean section, you're going to need to wait uh, a few weeks, you know, close to 12 weeks before you can do any significant exercise to try to work on that diastasis recti. All right, so another treatment for diastasis would be an abdominoplasty. Abdominoplasty are really for those women who are at, who have optimized their weight loss, right? They're done having children, but they still have puffiness. They have, um, you know, a roll or a panis at the lower abdomen with their fair amount of extra skin and, and extra subcutaneous tissue. What we do with an abdominoplasty is we make an incision along the, um, the lower abdomen. We make a flap all the way up to the xiphoid, all right? And then we close that gap, those recti muscle. We suture them together, okay? Uh, so that makes a nice tight belly, um, no laxity at all. The flap is brought down, the uh, belly button itself stays um, in the native position, and then a new hole is created, and that extra tissue at the bottom, bottom of the abdomen, which has now been open, released, is dissected away. It's basically cut away, and, and then uh, an, an incision is made, an incision is closed. Um, usually drains are involved. Recovery also is about 12 weeks, very similar to cesarean section. And, it, you know, this is not a procedure for everybody. If you can get away with, you know, doing your exercise, um, that's going to be the best diet diet management. And really just not gaining so much weight during pregnancy um, is going to help being active uh, even prior to pregnancy or all factors that can help. You know, it's interesting uh, when I took a look at the literature, weights, weight gain itself or obesity, I should say, uh, wasn't necessarily a factor in all the studies, but you would think like the more weight you gained, you'd have a higher risk of developing a diastasis or a diastasis that would last like 12 months after um, birth, but that wasn't always the case. Another thing that you can do uh, during your pregnancy and also uh, while you're healing, is just being careful not to increase your intra-abdominal pressure. Something simple like getting out of bed or getting into bed. You know, you really should try to make every effort to kind of go on your side um, rather than lying flat back. And the reason for that is, you know, try it. It really, uh, hurt. it can hurt. But besides that, you feel like the, the pressure in your um, abdomen increasing. So again, anything that's going to increase your intra-abdominal pressure is probably going to help, um, you know, increase your risk of a diastasis recti. Uh, you know, certainly, um, you know, eating well and, and exercising, those are all factors. 
Um, I know I only covered one ex exercise here. If you go on YouTube, there are a ton of different exercise videos, um, you know, that can help. Just remember, it's, you know, it's kind of common sense. Anything that's going to increase your intra-abdominal pressure is a type of exercise you really don't want to do early on. Planks can do that. Um, Sit-ups can do that. Crunches can do that. So you really want to avoid those um, types of exercises. So this is Dr. Sharon McLaughlin. I'm um, my 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 website is Health Street Journal. It's www.healthstreetjournal.com. Do take a look at it. I have an article on diastasis recti. Uh, I have podcasts. I have YouTube videos. And again, I, I want to thank you for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. And uh, and come back again. I'm always trying to do new posts here and there. And if if you could share it and tell your friends about it, I greatly appreciate it as well. Thanks so much again. Bye bye.